Welcome into a special edition of the Low Post Pod. I'm your host, Christian, joined again, as usual, with Matt and Kyle for a special championship edition. Uh, the only game that we're here to talk about is the championship, the most important game of the year. And uh, boys, well, Lob City, they did it. They came up, came out on top in the end here. Um, we talked about this in, in last week's podcast. It was going to be a tough test for Duye's boys without their two best players to uh, make this happen. It was a tightly contested game the whole way through for the most part. In the fourth quarter, Lob City takes over. Um, they really just were able to exert their dominance and they win the game 62 to 46. Fellas, you guys were there. I unfortunately wasn't able to go. So I want to hear from you guys. Uh, what happened? What was the turning point? Who really stood out? Uh, let me hear all of it. Yeah, so um, shout out, you know, the Lob City. Congratulations, champions. This is their fifth one in the last six years, which is extremely impressive. But the DA's boys, they had obviously an amazing season. Uh, they've been undefeated since the last game they lost last year. Um, and, you know, they're obviously the regular season champions. And, I mean, me and Kyle were there. This was a really, really close game. I mean, Lob City was only up by one going into the fourth quarter, and then they just exploded, and they scored 29, only allowing 14, which was still the highest scoring quarter for the Duyes boys. So the Duyes boys were relying on their on their defense – not offense, rather defense – and Lob City, in my opinion, looked really, really flustered on offense. They couldn't get anything going. They were settling for really poor shots. Um, they weren't getting out in transition quickly like they used to. People almost were like maybe afraid to shoot. Maybe it was finals nerves. I don't really know. But then Jose Mercado, he just took over in the spotlight, 11 for 17 from the field. He had 28 points. Colin Burns who we hadn't seen a lot of in the regular season, but he showed up for the playoffs. He had 14 and then other contributors with um, eight, seven, five, you know, points like that. But eventually Lob City kind of just kicked it into gear. We knew that they were going to hit a point where they'd go on a run and Duye's boys, even though they stuck into it and they played really, you know, hard nosed defense and made smart plays on offense in the end, it, it was just too much for them. And Lob City are the champions. Yeah, it was a very difficult offensive game for Duguay's boys. Uh, realistically, two players from their team got into the double digits, so they were really the only ones that were contributing much. But it came in just horrible numbers, you know, shooting below 40%. Uh, that's not the kind of numbers you want to have in a championship game. Uh, it especially did not help that, you know, Vincent Volpe and John Kutu were not there. Uh very poor planning of a vacation on their part. Um, whoever, I don't know if they planned it or if they had someone plan it for them, but that person should be fired uh, because I was getting really excited for this game. And then when I heard the announcement that, uh, that those two were not going to be there for Duguay's boys, I just, I just knew in the back of my head, Lob City had this in the bag, no matter what happened, who they put out on the floor, because just we've seen the Duguay's boys play. If they don't have those two players, their team just does not know how to function. Uh, we did see in the semifinals game that Vincent was there, though, and they barely squeaked it out. So if I knew both of them were going to be there, that offense was going to struggle. And uh, when time came to show in the fourth quarter, it was correct. Only put up 14 points and allowed 15 plus in a differential. Not good. Man, I know. Yeah, I was. Yeah, but I just want to say, you know, for Yarsi and Tartaglia, that was obviously a lot of weight on their shoulders to, ca you know, carry that offense. I still thought in the circumstances they did pretty well. I mean, even with Q2 and Volpe there, it was going to be a hard game. And then when, when they got the ball, Lob City is all over them because they know that those are the guys that can do damage. And I thought they were able to keep their composure well and at least keep Duye's boys in it for three quarters. So, honestly, I really thought Duye's boys – thought that was – one of the best performances they could have put up that night. You know, this could have been a laughable uh, defeat, but they, they they went out, you know, with, with some dignity and they they performed for three quarters. Yeah, I think I think last week in the podcast, we gave them a lot of credit, you know, the 15-point line. I think we both had them covering. Um, but in all reality, like, Bob City, if they, if they came out with their A game, they probably could have won that game by 30 points. Um, so since the games happened, we've seen Dewey's boys 
talking a little crap online, you know, having fun like usual. But they're saying this championship deserves an asterisk. Uh, Mickey Mouse championship, they said. In your guys' eyes, is this Mickey Mouse championship? So should these teams meet up sometime in the offseason to, uh, to settle the score, full squad and full squad? What do you guys think about all this? Uh, Kyle, I'll let you go first on this one. It's interesting. We saw these two teams match up with each other earlier in the season, and we saw – Duguay's won by 20 points easily. And this was like them flat out winning in the first quarter and dominating the whole time through. Duguay's kept it pretty 50-50 until the last quarter. Uh, so right now, j- just by this, it's one win for Duguay's, one win for Lob City. I think this third game should happen. I would like to see it just to settle the beef, you know, two to one win. They're one team's more dominant than the other. That's just my opinion. Um, I definitely would like to see it just as a fan perspective, but no, in my opinion, it's not a Mickey Mouse championship. I mean, there's no reason to discredit Lob City. They just came and they played who was on the court. You know, it's like it, it what can they, they can't control Q2 and Volpe want to go get tan in the Bahamas. I mean, they come and they, they play basketball on Tuesday and Wednesday nights. That's what they do. So I'm not going to just, and I thought Lob City you know, eventually had put up a really good performance. And I just want to mention, I predicted 62 to 49. It was 62 to 46. So maybe if they made one more three, I could have been dead on. But damn good. yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't call it a Mickey Mouse championship. It's all, it's funny. You know, it's, it's all jokes, but uh, no. And I'm sure it was Shane Patrick who was behind most of that. So maybe if he puts up more than seven points, then it, they wouldn't have to go calling it a Mickey Mouse championship now, would they? The Shane Matt rivalry. That's that's a great one. Uh, that's been going on all year, kinda. Um, so we we see you know the final results here. Um, you know, Lob City comes out on top. Do you think they go into the next season as the favorites, or do you guys see Dewey's boys as the favorites, assuming both teams bring everyone back? Because you know, full squad. You know, maybe we favorite Dewey's boys in a championship by a point or two. So who do you think has the upper hand going into next season? I think Duye's boys probably still have the upper hand, though, um, because I'm, I'm assuming, you know, all the players are going to be returning. I think they could maybe add a little more depth to their roster because, again, like you see, if one guy goes missing, they, they barely sc- scrape past the Orcas uh, in the semifinals. You know, if two guys go missing, they lose by double digits. So I think they're still the favorites, I think, because, you know, this is one loss and – a long stretch of games dating back to last season. Um, but I wouldn't count out Lob City as a favorite. I mean, they did just win the championship. So, but I would still say Duyay's boys would be my number one going into the next season. Uh, for me, I would have to agree with you. Duguay's going to be the number one though, but we still have, you know, an off season. We had a few players um, that we think might move around to different teams because now Ozone boys are, no longer a team, no more. And I know, I know Ozone boys, they love to play basketball and stuff. And uh, I know there's a bunch of teams out there that would love to accept um, those players with open arms, give the team a nice boost. I mean, even maybe the championship team, maybe the runner up. So we're going to have to see as, um, as this off season progresses though. But right now uh, with things as they are, I'd probably say Duguay's boys are the number one favorite. That's fair, and uh, it's interesting what you said about uh, players joining other teams in the offseason and stuff, and a big, um, you know, talking point over the last few years was when Jose Mercado made the move from Boom Shakalaka to the Werewolves, never played for the Werewolves because of the season getting canceled, and then went from the Werewolves uh, to Lob City. That ended up getting them over the hump. You know, they lost in the semis two years ago. This year they get to the championship. So how big was – you know, the addition of Jose Mercado to this already very stacked Lob City team? Obviously, it was huge. Um, Jose joins the team. He's, you know, you can say is the best player. And if you, if you just look at the stat lines in a championship game, you need that guy who's going to pull away and take over. And I think that's just that missing piece that Lob City needed uh, to get their fifth in six years. Um, so clearly it was a huge addition, but I'm just imagining – a Mercado and Heston led werewolves 
that's a real scary sight, you know. Oh, yeah. with with Campbell too. I don't want to discredit Campbell. He's he's the really good two guy on that team. But yeah, Jose Mercado obviously is a great going to be a great asset to whoever um, team he joins, and in most scenarios, he becomes the best player there. Honestly, I would like to see uh, Jose go back to the Werewolves and join that that squad and make it, you know, a big three. Because I mean, you got you got two. Well, you got one who's a big guy, gets rebounds, and he can throw it up the court. And Jose Brian, who's basically the legacy leagues version of a Giannis, basically can do everything, cross the court, you know, uh, coast to coast layups. Um, basically, a team leader that every team should want and should have. And then you know, you got your shooter. Uh, corner threes, top of the three keys, not afraid to also go to the, go to the line and shoot free throws when it matters down in, down in the close second. So uh, I would be very interested to see that actually happen. It just thinks that the, the season got canceled. I would have been – I think they would have probably won last year, the Werewolves. you got to assume so. I mean, the Werewolves were – even though they lost in the quarterfinals, they, there's a good chance, you know, they were very close to, to beating in the finals this year. Yeah, they – Hardly lost a good U who put up a good fight against Lob City. So they definitely could have been there. Um, They're probably just a, a player away, like you just said. Um, I'd love to see some guys move around this offseason, whenever the next season is, whether it's the fall, spring, winter, summer. I think Joey said probably it's going to be in the summer. But um, I'd love to see some guys move around. Uh, it just makes the league more interesting. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, and going forward, you just have like, 12 team captains and they, and they just make draft picks. That would be interesting. I don't know if Joey wants to shake something up here. I think it it would make the league pretty fun and maybe even make the league a little bit uh, more, I don't know, more parody. I don't know what you guys think. It's just an idea that just came into my head. It's my, uh, my strep, my strep throat brain. Well, right. Well, right now we're kind of in a weird situation where Lop City's won five of the last six. I mean, Mm -hmm. If I was to compare that with anything, it'd be like, you know, NBA a few years ago where simply just, you know, Lob City would be like the Golden State Warriors. You got Duguay's as the Cavs, you know, Cavs when, you know, come on and get that one lucky one in 2016. And then, you know, Warriors dominate all the other years. It's kind of like that right now. You got Lob City five out of six. And then you have, uh, you know, Duguay's boys winning in 2019. I would like to see something shaken up, though, because I would like to see some other teams win some championships. They're putting in the hard work, too. Yeah, I, I, I do think that's kind of interesting, and I, I I wasn't fully convinced on the idea until Kyle did give that analogy. Like, I think they do need something to shake it up. I, I don't think the players would agree to it, but I think you, if it's proposed, You're going to keep having the same matchups, basically, in the championship every year or have the same winners. Yeah, yeah. Unless, unless we get some new guys, I'm thinking, like, what would make it kind of fair so that you don't just lose your whole team would be you get the captain and then two more guys – and then the rest of the guys just go into a draft pool and you have a big draft. I don't know. That's just something I'm thinking of. That could be uh, kind of cool. Add some more content and more uh, interest to the league as all the teams would be changing uh, year after year. It would certainly be interesting. Matt, what were you going to say about that? I was going to say, like, the more that I talk about it, the more I kind of like it. It would be, like, clashes of chemistry and and it would definitely be – way more balanced team. So it'd be much harder to predict and a lot more fun, I think. Yeah. As cool as it is to watch, you know, Lob City dunk on the Mambas and beat them by 60. At the end of the day, you know, it's, it's most fun to see uh, close games. And I think uh, that would be something that could do it. I don't know. It's just something that we randomly start talking about. I think the Mambas would show up in this episode, but they still do. (laughs) Yeah, the Mambas showing up in the championship episode. That's the only way they're ever going to be talked about in a championship episode, unfortunately. Um, So do you guys have anything else to add about this game? Any key details um, or anything you want to talk about? Um, No, I mean, I think we basically summarized it all up. Uh, Lob City, they're the champions. I think they deserve it. You know, Mickey Mouse, whatever you want to call it, they played who was out there on the on the court. That's all they can really control. So I think it's more on Q2 and Volpe for not being there for their team. So um, the DA's boys, they had a great season as well. And it was a fun summer. For me? 
Lob City's forever the champions of 2021. They got the shirts. They got the trophy. They got the plaque. Jose Mercado's got the MVP trophy. You can scream Mickey Mouse, you know, fraud, championship, whatever you want, though. But at the end of the day, Lob City 2021 champions, that's cemented in history forever. Yeah, at the end of the day, Lob City did it. They beat who was in front of them. Duya's boys obviously had a great chance to win that championship if everyone was there. But in the end, it doesn't matter. I'm a big Duya's boy fan. I, of course, you know, was picking them all year, but, you know, stuff happens. So uh, Lob City, man, they're, they're an unbelievable team. Like you said, they have a, a great pedigree in the past um, and now for the future, especially if they're able to keep this squad together, it's going to be hard to beat them. Um, unbelievable year. Congratulations to them, 100%. Uh, it was it was well fought, and they do what they need to do, no matter if it was pretty or ugly, man. They always made it happen. So, um, you guys good? Anything else? I, mean, I know it's a quick episode, but, you know, only one game, so. It's been a fun year. Yeah, a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of fun games to watch this year. We had a few close playoff games, though, but everything's all said and done. Now we're prepping for next year, next season. I second that. Sir, next season is the best one. That's what they that's what they say. So we can only keep improving. Um, thanks for everyone listening in this year. Really appreciate all the uh, support. Um, so, yeah, uh, you know, thanks for listening to the Low Post Pod, guys. Uh, take care, and I'll see you next year.